Welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 7. It's all about mobile learning. Now this week we're going to look at um, modularized learning, which is the learning time anywhere model. We're going to look at BYOD in the classroom and flipped classroom. We're going to look at uh, podcasts and videos, post-it notes, and then we'll go down to a little bit of um, Khan Academy where you can get some pod, uh, podcasts for and how to integrate stuff into your classroom. So learn anywhere, anytime, and at Poultry it's also any way. Um, this is all about realizing and recognizing that students are taking their ideas and their learning and packaging it up and they they want to learn anywhere. So instead of instead of forcing the students to learn in the classroom, they may learn outside of the classroom, breaking up the, the methods of learning. And instead of the teacher being the uh, sage on the stage, supposedly, they turn into the guy on the side. There used to be a really old term uh, or real politically correct term called a learning facilitator, uh, came out in the 90s. and Initially, it was considered to be a really stupid idea um, because teachers teach, students learn, teachers teach. Nowadays, it's actually become quite a popular term because it's all about moving away from content delivery and moving more into social constructivist. So in this way, you're getting the students to absorb the content in a different way and you're then looking, uh, so that's all the shallow learning and then you're looking more for the depth of learning. So... E-learning used to be the way of converting all your material into electronic stuff. So in this case, I'm doing my thing as a PowerPoint. We're suggesting that you might change it and um, instead of putting all your stuff up as a electronically, so into Edmodo or something, you actually start taking that further along. M-learning is all about mobile learning. So you, <laughs> I watched a really good debate between whether or not mobile learning is learning on your mobile, as in your mobile phone, or learning in a mobile environment, in other words, moving around. Uh, both can be considered to be correct um, in the same way that you would not sit in the classroom and just use your mobile phone. It's the same way as sitting in a garage and listening to the radio in your car. You want to be using the phone to take you to many, many places. Now, BYOD is bring your own device. In bring your own device in the classroom means that uh, when the DER funding came out, or Digital, Digital Education Revolution funding came out, it meant that many, many schools have now gone to a one-to-one -one model where all the students in year nine to 12 have a computer. So that means that whenever you're walking to a classroom, all those students have a computer in front of them. So it means you need to start thinking about how you're teaching. If you're just teaching facts, the kids can look it up. If you're teaching uh, uh, concepts uh, via PowerPoint, why are you getting them to write it down? Why not push the PowerPoint to them? And then you look at more depth of knowledge. Now, modularized learning is where you start packaging up that, that learning. Instead of giving them one lesson at a time, why not give them the whole week's worth of work and get them to work through it? Packaging up the uh, material means the students are more likely to continue and learn one concept and then move on in their own pace. Now, as long as you can keep that pace moving, the students will really get involved in this. So this means that uh, if a student's doing particularly well, they can use their time more effectively. If a student's struggling, they can ask for help. Maths lesson is a perfect example of this. Why not make videos for your maths class to train the students on how to do it? Or why not find videos? Uh, there is really only three things a, you do in a maths classroom. You either, this, either the students sit there and practice the questions on their own, or they sit there and copy notes off the board on their own, or they sit there and do a test on their own. Now, this is not saying that, that you don't have outstanding maths teachers who do more integration, they do more assignment-based learning, uh, or problem-based learning, uh, small group activities, and so on. But uh, if you're making videos, you're pushing off that content then and letting the students learn at their own pace. That's a third of the lesson gone that you don't have to worry about writing notes on the board. You can still pull them together, do a little bit of teaching, but let them review it. Okay, so stages of the flipped classroom. I covered this in the lecture um, before, and I've got another video separate to this, which I go into in great more detail. But you can see here, this is our current model, where teacher stands at the front, student and teaching, and students learn. In this case, if a student puts his hand up, you have to then deal with that student. Moving on to a PowerPoint or a video, now the students can all be learning, but however, they're all learning in lockstep. If, so that if, at one, if we have to pause the video, then they all get paused. Here where we push them off to their class, uh, to their screens, it's a lot better. The students now have the opportunity to watch it in their own pace. Um, sorry, let's skip on. So, so the students can watch this in their own pace. 
um, if they've got any questions, they can then uh, ask for clarification. And then flipping the classroom is where you design, you change it and so the students can do all the content outside of the class, whether it's in, during class time and uh, absorbing it in that time or whether or not they're doing it outside of class. Now, podcast videos and apps. Um, iTunes is a great place to go to get podcasts for yourself. Rather than you making a podcast, you can always just go and download them. I'm just going to bring up uh, iTunes. So in this case, I've just looked up Japanese. So here, I think there's a whole heap of Japanese iPhone apps, right? iPad apps, albums, and then if I go down, I want to go right down to books, audio books, courses, iTunes U episodes, so on, so on, so on, so on, music, movies. So we've, we've looked at Japanese. Now there are thousands of podcasts. Um, can I please point out to all the low teachers, to be honest, students really don't like languages. Now that's a big generalization. It's the same thing for maths and lots of other subjects as well. However, quite often students will leave a language class going, sweet, don't have to worry about it until next week. So you have to find a way that will engage the students for a longer period of time and it stretches beyond the classroom. So in this case, you might download this Japanese, uh, Japanese Pod 101. Uh, and get the students to go, okay, your homework is to listen to this to the Japanese podcast and move through. Now, whether you're making the podcast yourself or whether you're getting the students to uh, listen to someone else's podcast, it's a great opportunity for them to really practice their Japanese or German or French or so on. Um, and it gets them going out, into, gets them taking their Japanese lessons beyond the classroom. Now, perfect example of this is Khan Academy. Now, the um this is originates from Salman Khan. Uh, he's won so many awards for the work that he does. Originally, he uh, decided to produce a uh, some videos for his cousin who lived on the other side of America, and uh, and they thought the easiest way of doing this is to put it on the, on YouTube, and that way the students, uh, his cousin, could watch it whenever she felt the need. And after a little while, he, he went back and checked it and saw that it'd been watched a thousand times. He thought, this is not possible. How can she be watching this a thousand times? Um, and what he found was there were so many other people who were doing it. So he made this kind of coming. Now, in this case, I'm, I've gone on here and I'm looking at the world of maths and it would track my progress. It's a bit like, there's a mathematics is another example. Um, the good thing is, so here we can see, I right, look to minus three quarters. So obviously it's going but minus, I would say it's going to be about there. And I go uh, submit answer and move on. Uh, Transition, transition apply. So it looks to me like it's a uh, minus three, minus three. So this is really testing my understanding. All right, and so I'm not going to go any further, but it will test. It will give me a pretest and assess where I'm going, and then and plan out what I'm going to do from that. You've got badges and progress, so you can really track the progress of what you're doing. Now, if I go to YouTube, I can then go and see Salman's videos. This is instead of doing it through the other one. Um, but it gives you an opportunity to watch, there's so many videos in here, and he really feels like he's talking directly to you. Okay, uh, podcasts, next one. All right, so learn anywhere in time. So the uh, I've discussed the late lesson. The just-in-time training, which most teachers really tap into, is where we're getting the students to um, to learn the stuff they need just when they need it. Now, for my ICT, or for my IT teaching, I get the students to listen, to watch videos, and then follow along uh, on the computer. Um, the same thing you could do with uh, math, science, English, any other subjects. E-learning 2.0, uh, so this is all about social learning, blogs, wikis, and podcasts. All of these are quite common in, cl in classes. Some teachers love them, some teachers find them a little bit frustrating or take it away, but really it's transitioning what you would normally do in a classroom into the digital age. Now, what I want you to do as well, Google Docs is a really great uh, website to go to, and this for here, tinyurl.com forward slash 7HTMYKA. If you write that down into a web address, it will take you to educational apps. Now this is a Google Doc that everybody's been working on over the last couple of years. And if you found any apps that you think are appropriate, uh, then jump on here and add them in. So here, these are first of all, all educational apps. And then it goes into uh, good apps for teachers. It goes into science and so on. So you all have access to this. You can all add to this as well. So if you're adding to it, please paste in a picture, give a link, 
give the cost if you know what it is and description and put your name underneath it so that way you're getting credit for adding to the to the resource anyone can use this resource you click on here and it takes you straight in now <coughs> now the next part is uh, I'm gonna give you an example of a post-it note post-it note prank is really low tech so basically I walk into a class, I give my students a pack of post-it notes, and I say, all right, come up with all the ideas for atoms. The students write down all their notes, and then I pull up the PowerPoint that I've already created, and they say, all right, well, first of all, I'll get the students to post all their post-it notes up onto the screen, or up onto the walls, or whatever, and then I'll say, if you've written the same thing as someone else, then stick yours on top, um, and you sort them into kind of groups. Then you put up the PowerPoint, and get them to work through the PowerPoint, and, when a note comes up that they've written, I then go, all right, slide one, this is this post-it note. And the kids feel that they've written the PowerPoint. They feel like they're being involved in the process. Oops. Now, some examples of alternatives is Padlet. So Padlet, if I go here, Padlet is the same as a post-it note. So if I click on here, I can just write whatever I want. Jared, uh, you can put in YouTube clips. You can put in links to other websites, all right, uh, you can put in all these different things, and it's basically just a wall that everyone can collaborate on. Poplar is another example uh, of doing mind maps together, so I can double click to make a pop, uh, to, to make a popple, I think they're called, uh, so if I go atom, and then if I click over here, oops, double click this way, uh, small, so it's, it's and because you can put in your own name up here, it means that the students can then, uh, I have to put in my name up top, but the students, can, you can then see who's added what, and this gets bigger and bigger and so on. So these are electronic formats of doing the same thing as a post-it note. Okay, so mobile phones is finally the last things I, I, I just wanted to quickly discuss. Some schools love uh, will allow mobile phones in the classroom. And why wouldn't you? It's a piece of technology that is basically a computer in the hands of the students. It's a computer, it's a camera, it's a digital recorder, a dictaphone, everything else, a calculator, and plus all the apps that you get on. Why would you ban mobile phones? Now, the, uh, the truth is they're banned because some students instigate fights or problems. Um, they try and record it then and put it up on YouTube. So as long as the students are aware that this is not okay, um, and you go through cyber safety with them and discuss it, the students are normally pretty good. But using mobile phones in your classroom is a great opportunity. I used to get my students to bring their mobile phones to a science lesson. They can record before and after shots. They can videotape, video record what they're doing. They can dictaphone their, their uh, observations. And then when they're finished, they can pull it all back and write it all up. So what I want you to do though is for your discussion, what, what are some of the issues with mobile phones in schools? Given the opportunity, how would you use mobile devices in the classroom? And thirdly, are there any apps that you've seen or stumbled upon that, you, that would suggest the others? So this is where you contribute to the Google Doc. So finally this week, you're going to be looking at standard three, plan and implement effective teaching and learning. Now think about what technology you can use to do this, uh, but more importantly, how can you plan for your teaching? You're gonna to need to know this for going out in your teaching practice, which is be coming up in just a week or so. So good luck.